Whenever the India's most famous murder case is discussed, there is definitely mention of Tandoor case. Nina Sani was the victim of the 1995 Tandoor murder case. The reason for this case being famous was because Nina's corpse was found after her demise in a Tandoor. You will also be shocked to hear the method adopted to kill the dead person. The reason behind the murder was even more strange. So, what is Tandoor murder case or Nina Sani murder case? Tandoors are typically fueled by charcoal or wood, although modern versions may use gas or electricity for heat. The distinctive shape of the tandoor allows for high temperature cooking, reaching up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit, 480 degrees Celsius, or even higher. The inner walls of the tandoor are heated by the fuel, and the food is cooked by the radiant heat, as well as by the convection currents created within the oven. The intense heat quickly sears the outside of the food while keeping the inside moist and tender. This cooking method imparts a unique smoky flavor and charred aroma to the food. Tandoors are commonly used for cooking various dishes, including 1. Tandoori chicken, chicken marinated in yogurt and spices, skewered and cooked in the tandoor. 2. Naan, leavened Indian flatbread that is slapped onto the inner walls of the tandoor to cook quickly and puff up. 3. Tandoori kebabs, skewered pieces of meat, seafood, or vegetables marinated in spices and cooked in the tandoor. 4. Tandoori roti, whole wheat bread cooked in the tandoor, similar to naan but without yeast. 5. Tandoori fish, fish marinated in spices and yogurt, then cooked in the tandoor. Tandoors come in various sizes, from small household ones to large commercial ones used in restaurants. They are integral to the culinary traditions of many cultures and are valued for their ability to produce flavorful and aromatic dishes. This case was also historic in terms of investigation because for the first time in India, many new investigative methods were employed. Date July 2, 1985, around 11 p.m., two Delhi police personnel, Constable Abdul Nazir Kunj and Home Guard Chandrapal, went out on patrol in one of the most affluent areas of Delhi. As they patrolled the streets, the vigilant eyes of two Delhi police officers caught sight of a woman in distress. Her frantic cries pierced through the night, echoing fire, fire, into the darkness. This woman was a familiar face, known for selling vegetables in the bustling vicinity. Responding swiftly to her distress call, the two officers hurried towards her, their senses alert to the urgency of the situation. Arriving at the scene, their eyes beheld a terrifying sight. Towering flames engulfed Ashok Yatri Niwas, a renowned hotel in the area. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, the officers sprang into action, coordinating efforts to ensure the safety of all those in harm's way. Their training kicked in as they worked tirelessly to contain the blaze, risking their own safety to protect the lives and property of the people they served. Through their bravery and swift response, these two soldiers of the Delhi police stood as beacons of hope in the face of adversity, embodying the selflessness and dedication that defined their noble profession. Abdul Nazir, acting swiftly upon spotting the flames, wasted no time in alerting the fire brigade, ensuring that professional assistance was en route to combat the escalating inferno. With his companion by his side, he raced towards Hotel Yatri Niwa's near point A, the source of the raging fire. As they neared the hotel, the intensity of the flames became apparent. It was the Bagia barbecue restaurant within Hotel Yatri Niwas that was ablaze. The urgency of the situation spurred Abdul Nazir and his companion to press forward, determined to assess the extent of the danger and assist in any way they could. Approaching the scene, they encountered Keshav Kumar, the hotel manager, stationed at the gate. Seeking information about the fire, they questioned Keshav about the costs. In response, Keshav informed them that the restaurant contained numerous old posters and banners, attributing them as the potential fuel for the fire. However, his explanation left the policemen unconvinced, sensing that there might be more to the situation than meets the eye. Despite their suspicions, Keshav Kumar obstructed their attempts to enter the premises, preventing them from further investigating the unfolding crisis. Despite his efforts, Abdul Nazir and his companion remained resolute in their determination to uncover the truth behind the blaze, 
their commitment to public safety undeterred by the obstacles in their path. As the policemen's suspicions deepened, they began to sense that there was more to the situation than initially met the eye. Sensing a hidden truth lurking within the confines of the restaurant, they decided to depart from the premises momentarily. However, one constable, driven by an unwavering determination to uncover the reality behind the mysterious fire, veered towards the back of the establishment. Undeterred by obstacles, the constable scaled a wall, deftly maneuvering his way inside the restaurant. Upon entering, a chilling sight met his gaze, a scene that would haunt his memory forever. The guys told him they were roasting a goat. But instead of the innocent roasting of a goat as claimed, he discovered a disturbing reality unfolding before him. In the kitchen area, where the old posters and banners were supposedly being burnt, the constable's eyes were drawn to a ghastly sight, a human hand amidst the flames. Shock and disbelief washed over him as he realized the gravity of the situation. It became apparent that something sinister was transpiring within the confines of the restaurant, something far more sinister than a mere accident or innocent explanation could justify. With a heavy heart and a sense of duty weighing upon him, the constable knew that he had stumbled upon a crime of unspeakable proportions. Hastily, he relayed his discovery to his fellow officers, setting into motion a chain of events that would unravel the dark secrets hidden within the walls of the Bagheera Barbecue Restaurant. The constable realized that these people were burning a human being. Despite seeing the hand, he went out disguised as a stranger. On getting outside the restaurant, the constable immediately called the police team so she could take them to the spot where she found the incriminating evidence. When the police team arrived, they swooped on the unsuspecting culprits suddenly and tried to catch them inside the restaurant. At that time, two people were standing near the tondoor. One of them somehow managed to escape from the police. Luckily, the police caught a man named Keshav Kumar. The fire of the burning tondoor was quickly extinguished, and then the ground slips from under everyone's feet. They found a human corpse on top of the tondoor. Her face had been badly burnt to a great extent, and it was impossible to recognize. Although her jaw had not yet been severely burnt to the point that it was not recognizable, it was clear that this body was that of a woman. The police immediately started interrogating Keshav Kumar, the guy that was apprehended. They made a shocking revelation when Keshav Kumar introduced himself as the manager of Bagheera Restaurant and confessed that the corpse lying on the tondoor was Nana Sani, wife of the owner of the restaurant, Mr. Sushil Sharma. Further interrogation revealed that the man who escaped was indeed no other than Sushil Sharma himself. The police quickly found out that Sushil Sharma, Nina Sushil's husband, was not an ordinary man, but a big personality in the politics of Delhi. Actually, Sushil Sharma was associated with the Congress party, and at the time of this incident, he was also the president of Delhi Youth Congress. Nina Sani was also associated with the Congress party at one time. The search for Sushil Sharma started in earnest. As news of the gruesome discovery of Nina's murder and dismembered body in the oven at the Bagheera Barbecue Restaurant began to spread like wildfire, it ignited a frenzy of speculation and shock across the city of Delhi. Media outlets swiftly picked up on the story, with headlines blaring the horrific details of the unfolding tragedy. The initial shockwaves reverberated throughout the nation, capturing the attention of the public and sending ripples of unease and concern far and wide. With each passing hour, the story gained momentum, spreading beyond the confines of Delhi to capture the collective consciousness of the entire country. Television screens flickered with images of the charred remains and scenes of investigators combing through the restaurant for clues. Newspapers dedicated front-page coverage to the chilling developments, dissecting every detail and offering theories about the sinister events that had unfolded within the walls of the once tranquil eatery. Social media platforms buzzed with discussions, hashtags, and shared updates as citizens grappled with the shocking reality of the crime. From bustling metropolises to remote villages, the news of the Bagheera barbecue restaurant sent shockwaves through the nation, serving as a grim reminder of the fragility of human life and the depths of human depravity. As the investigation unfolded and more details emerged, the story continued to captivate the nation's attention sparking debates about law and order, ethics, and the state of society. 
In the aftermath of the tragedy, calls for justice echoed across the country as citizens demanded accountability and swift action to ensure that such horrors would never be repeated. The story of the Baguia Barbecue Restaurant would go down in history as a dark chapter, leaving an indelible mark on the collective consciousness of the nation and serving as a sobering reminder of the fragility of life and the ever-present shadows that lurk beneath the surface of society. In the aftermath of the shocking discovery at the Baguia Barbecue Restaurant, law enforcement agencies launched an extensive manhunt for Sushil Sharma, the prime suspect in the heinous crime. With the nation gripped by the unfolding tragedy, police forces mobilized resources and deployed teams to search every nook and cranny, leaving no stone unturned in their pursuit of justice. From bustling city streets to remote hideouts, authorities scoured the length and breadth of the country, following leads and chasing down any hint of Sushil Sharma's whereabouts. Special task forces were assembled, and intelligence networks were activated, utilizing advanced technology and traditional investigative methods to track down the elusive suspect. Roadblocks were set up, checkpoints established, and border crossings monitored as law enforcement agencies coordinated efforts to apprehend Sushil Sharma and bring him to justice. Media outlets broadcast his image far and wide, urging citizens to remain vigilant and report any sightings or information that could aid in his capture. As days turned into weeks and the manhunt intensified, tensions mounted and the pressure on authorities grew. The search for Sushil Sharma became a top priority for law enforcement agencies, with the eyes of the nation fixed on their efforts to apprehend the fugitive and ensure that he faced the full force of the law for his alleged crimes. With the fate of Sushil Sharma hanging in the balance, the relentless pursuit continued, fueled by a determination to deliver justice and bring closure to the victims and their families. Nina's husband was nowhere to be found and for a whole week the police combed everywhere leaving no stone unturned, but it was A.S. though he had simply vanished into thin air. Everyone was angry and soon the accused in this case, Sushil Sharma, was apprehended and put behind bars. In a strategic move to expedite the capture of Sushil Sharma, the Delhi police initiated a clever ruse. They deliberately spread rumors suggesting that law enforcement was closing in on the fugitive, creating an atmosphere of heightened anticipation and speculation. Sensational headlines began to dominate media outlets, with reports swirling that an imminent arrest was on the horizon. As the news spread like wildfire, the pressure on Sushil Sharma intensified, and the walls began to close in around him. Faced with mounting scrutiny and the relentless pursuit of law enforcement, Sushil found himself with no recourse but to surrender himself to the authorities. On July 10, 1995, in a dramatic turn of events, Sushil Sharma was apprehended by the Delhi police in Bangalore. The news sent shockwaves through the nation, marking the culmination of an intense manhunt that had gripped the country for weeks. With his arrest, Sushil Sharma was brought to justice, signaling the end of a harrowing chapter in the nation's history. The Delhi police's strategic maneuver had proven successful, effectively leveraging public perception and media pressure to compel the fugitive to surrender himself. As Sushil Sharma was escorted into custody, the nation breathed a collective sigh of relief, knowing that justice would be served for the victims of the Baguia barbecue restaurant tragedy. The arrest brought closure to a tumultuous period, offering a glimmer of hope amidst the darkness that had enveloped the nation. As the interrogation of Sushil Sharma commenced following his dramatic arrest, investigators were met with a cascade of surprising revelations that shed new light on the chilling events surrounding the Baguia barbecue restaurant tragedy. With each passing moment, the depths of the deception and depravity at play began to unravel, leaving investigators stunned and the nation reeling in disbelief. Among the shocking facts unearthed during the interrogation were 1. Motive Sushil Sharma revealed the shocking motive behind the heinous crime, exposing a web of jealousy, betrayal, and rage. He confessed to murdering his wife, Nainasani, in a fit of jealousy over an alleged affair, setting into motion the tragic sequence of events that would culminate in the inferno at the Baguia barbecue restaurant. 2. Premeditation Investigators were astonished to discover the extent of premeditation involved in the crime. 
Sushil Sharma meticulously planned the murder and subsequent cover-up, orchestrating a scheme to dispose of Ninasani's body in the tandoor of the restaurant in a brazen attempt to conceal his heinous act. 3. Complicity As the interrogation delved deeper, shocking revelations emerged regarding the involvement of accomplices in the crime. Sushil Sharma implicated several individuals, including hotel staff and associates, who were complicit in aiding and abetting his nefarious deeds. 4. Deception Throughout the interrogation, Sushil Sharma exhibited a mastery of deception, weaving a tangled web of lies and half-truths in an attempt to evade accountability. However, skilled investigators were adept at penetrating his facade unraveling the layers of deceit to expose the truth hidden beneath. 5. Callousness Perhaps most disturbing of all was the callous disregard for human life displayed by Sushil Sharma. His actions demonstrated a chilling indifference to the suffering of others, as he callously orchestrated the murder of his wife and callously endangered the lives of innocent individuals in pursuit of his own selfish desires. As the interrogation progressed, each startling revelation served to underscore the gravity of the crimes committed by Sushil Sharma, painting a portrait of a man consumed by darkness and driven by unfathomable depths of depravity. Yet, in the face of such evil, the resolve of the investigators remained unwavering, determined to bring about justice for the victims and closure for a nation left grappling with the aftermath of tragedy. Sushil Sharma, the perpetrator behind the tragic events of the Bagheya Barbecue Restaurant, was a commerce graduate from Delhi University. His educational background in commerce provided him with a foundation of knowledge in financial matters and business administration, although it ultimately failed to prevent him from succumbing to darker impulses. In contrast, Nina Sani, Sushil's wife and victim of his heinous crime, also hailed from an academic background rooted in Delhi University. Notably, she too had pursued her graduation from the esteemed institution displaying a similar commitment to education and intellectual pursuits. However, Nina's aspirations extended beyond the confines of commerce, as she also embarked on a journey to become a commercial pilot. Her training in aviation represented a departure from traditional career paths, reflecting a spirit of ambition and adventure that set her apart from others. Mr. and Mrs. Sharma's fateful encounter took place in the vibrant political arena of Delhi in the year 1989. At that time, Sushil Sharma held the prestigious position of President of the Delhi Pradesh Youth Congress, a role that placed him at the forefront of the city's political landscape. Meanwhile, Nina Sahani, with her bold and adventurous spirit, soared through the skies as a pilot, showcasing her prowess in the aviation industry. But her ambitions didn't stop there. She also assumed the esteemed role of General Secretary of the Youth Congress, a testament to her dedication to public service and her desire to make a difference in the world. It was amidst the bustling corridors of political power and the soaring heights of the skies that fate intervened, bringing Mr. and Mrs. Sharma together for the first time. Their initial meeting, framed against the backdrop of ambition, idealism, and youthful enthusiasm. Before meeting Sushil, Nina had a close friendship with a Muslim youth who was also involved in the Youth Congress. However, due to family pressures, Nina had to end this friendship, setting her on a tumultuous path that eventually led her to Sushil. Sushil had feelings for Nina from the beginning, but it wasn't easy for him to win her over. However, he managed to gain her affection by helping Nina's aunt resolve a land dispute. In 1993, Sushil and Nina got married secretly at Badla Temple. Sushil was worried about the impact their marriage could have on his political career, so he kept it hidden from the public eye. Their marriage was far from happy. Nina wanted to make their relationship public, but Sushil disagreed. This caused frequent arguments between them. Despite living together in a rented flat in GOL market, Sushil never introduced Nina to his family in Patampara emphasizing his desire to keep their marriage a secret. Tragically, their relationship was also marked by episodes of violence, often fueled by Sushil's drinking habits. Nina suffered physical abuse at his hands, highlighting the darker side of their marriage. According to a youth congress leader from that era, there was an alarming incident involving Sushil Sharma and Nina Sahani. 
Allegedly, Sushil once brandished a gun and even fired a shot in Nina's direction. However, it was claimed that he deliberately missed, sparing Nina from harm. This disturbing revelation sheds light on the volatile nature of their relationship. Additionally, according to youth congress leaders from the 1990s, Sushil Sharma was known to have a penchant for the company of women. He was described as a ladies' man who enjoyed being in close proximity to women. This characterization offers further insight into Sushil's character and behavior during that period. According to reports published in a newspaper, Sushil Sharma was known for his willingness to accommodate the demands of women. Manindrajit Singh Butt, who served as the national president of the Youth Congress at the time, was quoted as saying that Sushil deliberately appointed women as office bearers in the organization. This suggests a pattern of behavior where Sushil prioritized the inclusion of women in leadership roles within the Youth Congress. Furthermore, individuals close to Nina Sahani claimed that there were suspicions regarding Sushil Sharma's involvement with a woman residing in South Extension. This speculation adds another layer to the complexities of Sushil's relationships and highlights the rumors and gossip surrounding his interactions with women during that period. Following the revelations surrounding Sushil Sharma's alleged illicit relations, the police conducted further investigations into the matter, including questioning the woman purportedly involved with Sushil. It was reported that Sushil had promised to secure a Lok Sabha election ticket for this woman, indicating the extent of his involvement with her. Additionally, there were rumors suggesting that if Nina Sahani had accused Sushil of engaging in extramarital affairs, Sushil would have retaliated by accusing Nina of being involved with someone else. This speculation underscores the suspicion and mistrust that pervaded their marriage, fueling a cycle of accusations and counteraccusations. The fallout from their ongoing conflict led Nina to seek solace and support from her former classmate and Congress leader. With their assistance, Nina gradually formed a connection with a man named Matt Luke Kareem, a former colleague from her workplace. Together with Matla's help, Nina embarked on a journey to realize her long-held dream of escaping her tumultuous relationship with Sushil and pursuing a career as a pilot abroad. However, Sushil remained oblivious to these developments, unaware of Nina's intentions. As Nina became increasingly involved with Kareem, Sushil grew suspicious of their relationship. The growing tension between them escalated into frequent arguments and fights, with Sushil's suspicions fueling further discord. The issue of Nina's alleged involvement with Kareem became a point of contention, exacerbating the already strained dynamics of their marriage. With each passing day, the rift between Sushil and Nina widened, driven by mistrust, jealousy, and resentment. Their once promising union had descended into a battleground of emotions, with the specter of infidelity casting a shadow over their fractured relationship. As the tumultuous saga unfolded, the future remained uncertain, fraught with the possibility of further heartache and turmoil. Interestingly, it was suggested that the man with whom Nina Sahani was allegedly involved in an affair was the same Muslim youth she had been friends with before meeting Sushil. This revelation adds a poignant layer to the complexities of their relationship, as it intertwines past connections with present turmoil, further contributing to the atmosphere of suspicion and doubt surrounding their marriage. However, everything changed drastically on the night of July 2, 1985. When Sushil Sharma returned home after dealing with his concerns, he walked into their flat to find Nina holding a glass of whiskey and talking on the phone with someone he didn't know. This sight shook Sushil to his core. He felt a mix of emotions, betrayal, anger, and sadness. Seeing Nina talking to someone else made him feel like their relationship was falling apart. The phone call, along with Nina's relaxed manner, made Sushil feel even more unsure and anxious. In that moment, their marriage felt like it was hanging by a thread. The tension in the room was heavy, and the silence that followed was deafening. Little did they know, this encounter would change their lives forever, leading to a tragedy that they could never have imagined. On the night of July 2, 1995, the day of the murder when Sushil Sharma arrived home, as soon as she saw Sushil, she moved her glass of whiskey towards herself. Sushil saw Nina talking on the phone and consuming alcohol. 
He was surprised to find Nina engaged in conversation with someone on the phone. Her husband asked her who she was communicating with and she told him she was talking to her family. She ended the call and went into another room. As soon as she left, Sushil quickly went to the phone, checked the number. He suspected Nina of continuously having extramarital relationship with Matlub despite his objection. Sushil redialed the phone to find Matlub on the other end. As soon as the phone rings, a person picks up the phone and says hello. Sushil hangs up the phone as soon as the person in front says, hello. Matlub Karim picked the call. He found out that she was indeed speaking to the same Muslim youth with whom she had been friends before meeting Sushil. This discovery only heightened Sushil's suspicions and fueled the growing tension between them. A heated argument and a fight ensued between Nina Sahani and Sushil Sharma on this matter, and both of them shouted each other on top of their voices. Now, this is Sushil's explanation of what happened that night Nina was murdered. According to Sushil, he said that after the fight he went to the balcony. After this fight, Sushil Sharma rises from his seat and makes his way to the balcony. With each step, a whirlwind of emotions churns within him confusion, anger, and a gnawing sense of betrayal. As he steps into the cool night air, the gentle breeze offers a momentary respite from the storm raging within him. Standing amidst the stillness of the night, Sushil grapples with the weight of the revelations that have shattered the fragile facade of his marriage. Alone with his thoughts, he stares out into the darkness, searching for answers amidst the chaos that now envelopes his life. After a while, both of them calmed down, but a while later, Nina Sahani told her husband she was going to commit suicide. And then she wrote a suicide note. Shortly after this, Sushil said he stood on the balcony and heard the sound of a gunshot. He ran towards the room where his wife was and saw her with the gun in her hand. Standing in the balcony, hears the sound of gunshot. She actually fired a bullet, but not at herself. She repeated she was going to take herself out again, but her husband said he tried to take the gun away from her. This time the matter escalates to such an extent that suddenly Sushil Sharma fired the gun towards Nina and it hit the back wall. He fired a second bullet. This bullet goes straight into Nina's garden and before even blinking an eye, he fired the gun yet again and this time the bullet went straight into Nina's head. Nina fell down her blood spilled everywhere. Sushil said he could not comprehend what had happened for a while, but when the impact of what he did dawned on him, he fell down and wept uncontrollably. Sushil Sharma felt two different things at once. He felt sorry for what he had done, but he also felt anxious about getting rid of the corpse. Sushil stepped out of his apartment, his senses heightened by the weight of his actions. He scanned the surroundings, hoping to gauge any signs of alarm or suspicion among his neighbors. To his relief, Everything appeared normal, the neighborhood enveloped in its usual calm. With a sigh of relief, Sushil descended to the market below. His next task weighed heavily on his mind as he navigated the bustling streets. He located a shop and purchased a large polythene bag, big enough to accommodate his sinister deed. As he made his way back home, the weight of the bag in his hand served as a grim reminder of the darkness that now tainted his existence. With each step, a sense of unease gnawed at him, a haunting reminder of the irreversible actions he had taken. First, very carefully, he puts Nina's body in the polythene bag and then wrapped it in a bedsheet which he kept aside and then proceeded to clean the blood from the room very carefully. Sushil found the suicide note Nina wrote and tore it. She wrote that she wanted her husband to perform her burial rite after her demise. The police recovered the note and was kept as an evidence. Despite all of Sushil's effort, he could not lift his wife's cold body. In the dead of the night, he dragged the corpse to car, Marty 800, and kept it in the trunk. He was confused and did not know what to do about it. He came up with an idea and that was to throw the body in a river. So he drove it to IDO Bridge in Delhi. There were lots of activities on the bridge where he thought he would throw the body from. He did not want to attract people to himself, so he came up with another idea to take the body to his restaurant. By the time he got to his restaurant, it was very crowded and a large number of people were eating outside under the facade. He parked his car and immediately called his manager Keshav Kumar and told him he wanted all the customer to leave as soon as possible. Keshav Kumar told him they had a lot of food but Sushil was too impatient. He told him he had an urgent matter he must take care of immediately. 
Keshav Kumar immediately found an excuse and all the customers soon left. He gave the staff 25 rupees each and asked them to go out to other restaurants and eat. So they all left. Sushil explained to his manager the horrible mistake he made and asked for his help. He said he had murdered his wife and needed his manager's help in disposing of the corpse. He convinced Keshav Kumar to help him. Finally, the manager agreed. Tandoori roti had just been prepared by the staff in the restaurant, and the tandoor was still running. Both of them drove the car very carefully. Nana's body was taken down and both of them put it on the tandoor. It remained on it for a long time because the small fire of the tandoor could not burn it. After this, Sushil asked Keshav to gather all the waste paper lying inside the restaurant and put it in the tandoor. Keshav went inside and brought all their old papers and put them in the tandoori. Despite all this, the fire was still not strong enough to burn the corpse. When once again the fire slows down, Sushil sent Keshav to bring the butter kept in the kitchen. As soon as the packet of butter is put in the tandoor, the fire flared up and started to burn. For packets of butter were put into the oven and the corpse started to burn very easily. More papers were added to the fire to make the burning faster. While all these was going on, Sushil and his manager were so engrossed in their operation that they did not notice that the flame of the fire had spread to other parts of the restaurant. A police officer was alerted that the restaurant was on fire. The police officer went inside the restaurant to see what was happening. As soon as Sushil saw them, he ran away and went to his IS friend in Gujarat Bawan, Delhi. Without disclosing anything to his friend, Sushil Sharma contrived a pretext to spend the entire night at the friend's place. In the cloak of darkness, he quietly slipped away the next day and embarked on a journey to Jaipur. From Jaipur, he hastily made his escape to Mumbai, seeking refuge amidst the bustling anonymity of the city. In Mumbai, amidst the chaotic streets and throngs of people, Sushil sought solace and sanctuary. However, the weight of his actions continued to weigh heavily on his conscience, driving him to seek spiritual redemption. Determined to cleanse himself of his sins, he made a pilgrimage to the revered Tirupada Balaji Temple, where he underwent the ritualistic act of shaving his head, a symbolic gesture of surrender and atonement. With shorn hair and a heart heavy with remorse, Sushil continued his journey, making his way to Chennai. In the sprawling metropolis, he sought refuge from the ghosts of his past, desperately hoping to outrun the shadows that threatened to engulf him. Yet, even as he fled from one city to another, the specter of his actions loomed large, haunting him at every turn. The police got wind of his presence in Chennai, and a police team was immediately dispatched there. But before the police could get there, Sushil Sharma had escaped to Bengaluru. The police followed him to Bengaluru, and finally on July 10, 1995, Sushil Sharma was arrested and sent to police remand for 10 days by the Delhi District Court on July 12, 1995. Sushil Sharma, his manager Keshav Kumar, and three other people were the accused in the case. This continues for the next several months. Many lawyers refused to take Sushil Sharma's case and he remained without any lawyer for some time. Finally, on the 3rd of November 2003, Sushil Sharma was declared guilty of the murder of Nainasani. His manager Keshav Kumar was also declared guilty in the case, and the remaining three people were acquitted. On the 7th of November, 2003, Sushil Sharma was sentenced to death by the district court while Keshav Kumar was sentenced to seven years imprisonment. Sushil Sharma appealed his case. Finally, in 2007, the Supreme Court changed the death sentence to life imprisonment. After this sentence, Sushil Sharma was imprisoned into Har Jail, where he worked as a priest. After spending 23 years in jail, Sushil was released by the Supreme Court in 2018 on the basis of good behavior, and he is living as a free man now. This case marked several firsts in India's legal history. It was the first time DNA testing was used for identification in a murder case. This innovative method provided crucial evidence for solving the crime and establishing the victim's identity accurately. Additionally, the police took unprecedented action by filing four cases in record time for a murder case. This swift response demonstrated a proactive approach to law enforcement and a commitment to delivering justice efficiently. 
These groundbreaking developments highlight the advancements in India's criminal justice system, showcasing the use of modern forensic techniques and efficient procedural practices to address complex cases and ensure accountability. In this case, initially it was said that Nine Asani's body was cut into pieces and cooked in a tandoor. The investigation into the burnt remains revealed a disturbing truth. The body was not cut into pieces as some people said. Despite this revelation, the manner in which Sushil attempted to dispose of the body was itself heart-wrenching. The very thought of someone resorting to such extreme measures to conceal their crime sends shivers down the spine. The callousness and brutality of the act defy comprehension, leaving a haunting imprint on the minds of those tasked with uncovering the truth. Indeed, the circumstances surrounding the disposal of the body serve as a stark reminder of the depths of human depravity and the lengths to which some will go to evade accountability. In the face of such horror, the resilience and dedication of investigators shine brightly as they strive to bring justice to the victims and closure to the families left grappling with unimaginable loss. Listen to this advice from a father to his son. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us. Let us lie in wait to shed blood. Let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol. And whole, like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path. For their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Surely, in vain the net is spread, in the sight of any bird. But they lie in wait for their own blood. They lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owners. Thank you for staying with me till the end of the story. What are your thoughts on this entire case? Please share your opinions in the comment section below. If you appreciated our efforts, don't forget to like this video and share it with others. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now and stay connected with Crime in Prison. By subscribing, you'll receive notifications for more compelling stories like this one. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video with another gripping true crime story.